Greetings, fellow captains. Did you know that update 0.7.11 is already prepared and it's set to bring with it a PvP version of Halloween mode, fixes to game mechanics, and map optimization? Let's learn all about these new features and changes. In this update, we changed the game mechanics a little, and we hope that you'll like what we did. Let's speak with the person responsible for implementing those changes. I know that you did a great deal of work trying to balance battleships and destroyers, because destroyers are supposed to counter battleships, but we have had a problem interfering with this. AP shells penetrate destroyers, don't they? Exactly. A big shell hitting thin armor at a wide angle doesn't ricochet. Then it meets armor at an angle. That's what we call relative armor. Because the angle is wide, the relative armor becomes several times thicker than the value that players see in the port. That's the effective armor that causes high-caliber armor-piercing shells to arm. After that, they inflict one-third of their maximum damage. This is a lot compared to the HP pool of a destroyer. It's the reason why a salvo from a battleship can sometimes rob a destroyer of half of its HP or even more. We're kind people, aren't we? And we introduced a limit, right? Yes, we introduced a limit. And now, a shell penetrating a destroyer's armor and arming inflicts just 10% of its maximum damage, which is the same amount of damage that an overpenetration of a destroyer causes. This limit works for calibers higher than 280 millimeters. To design a new patch for our game, one needs to not only be able to draw, but also understand heraldry and to find a suitable occasion for its introduction. In this update, we're adding patches and emblems for the Collector's Club, as well as for alpha and beta testers. How can you obtain them? Let's find out. So it's time to fulfill the promise and pay your debts, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's talk about the Collector's Club. As time went by, the number of ships in the game grew. And we faced a situation when more and more and more people met the requirements for the Collector's Club. This number became too large, and it was difficult for us to process all of the applications manually in due time without getting overloaded. As a result, we changed the concept of the Collector's Club a little, and we announced, well, actually, we announced in June that the Collector's Club would be relaunched, and in October, we're finally ready to say that very soon we'll release the emblems, patches, and everything else that we promised in that news article. What emblems will we have and how can we get them? There will be four emblem types depending on the number of ships in your port on which you have played at least one battle. If you have a hundred ships and you played at least one battle on each of them, you'll receive the Collector 3 emblem. It's really pretty. Our designers did good work on it. However, the Collector 2 emblem is even prettier, but you need 150 ships to obtain it. And it goes on like this, with steps of 50 ships until you receive the Collector Elite Emblem. As far as I know, we don't only want to reward those who collect ships, although they make a significant contribution to the development of our game. There are people who have been with us for a long time. Finally, we decided to introduce patches for alpha and beta testers. The next update will give you the opportunity to see and enjoy these unique emblems, patches, and some other interesting decorative items. We hope that you'll like them and that they'll be a reward worth waiting for. Finally, we're fulfilling the promises that we gave you. Godspeed. Our community is constantly providing us with feedback on game maps, and we keep improving them according to the feedback. This time we fixed five maps at once. How and why? Let's find out. Let's discuss the main changes, and I suggest we begin with Land of Fire, which wasn't actually on fire. 
we added some space to maneuver in the map's western part to allow ships that set out to capture key area A to maneuver and turn back in case of danger, in case they suddenly get spotted at the very beginning of a battle, because it's not very pleasant to expose your side without the ability to retreat. We also reworked key area C, right? Yes, we moved the small islands a little, that group of small islands, and we also adjusted landscape elevations. Before that, the teams had unequal conditions. For example, one team had low islands, which gave ships with specific ballistics the ability to hide and send their salvos over the terrain, while the other team had higher islands on their side and couldn't fire from behind them. Is everyone equal now? Yes, everyone is equal. Now the islands are roughly the same height. On the Warriors Path map, we replaced two small islands at key area A with one triangular island. Now the ships that want to capture this area will have to fight for it. We've been speaking about Halloween for a long time. We've told you about the submarines and their brave commanders. In this update, we'll give you an opportunity to play on the side of the forces of evil. Are you ready to try to assume the role of Rasputin itself? Our most popular guest, Danila Lichkin, senior game designer for the Halloween event, is here to tell us about it. I know that you didn't come up with the idea for this event all by yourself. Our contributors and bloggers suggested it during the summit, right? Yes, indeed. When they came to us, they came up with the idea of making a new game mode, a battle royale of sorts. The first prototype took us about two to three hours to make. We played it together with them, and it was quite good fun. But we understood that this mode didn't fit the setting of our main game very well. For this reason, we decided to use it for Halloween instead. Yeah, we always use Halloween to test everything. It doesn't matter who invented what. The main thing is that we'll have the consumables that everybody liked in the Sunray in the Darkness operation again. Yes, that's true. Back in 2017, one of the main features was new consumables, including immunity to damage and repair zones, which will be also available for the PvP mode. In addition to that, we invented several new consumables, including my favorite, Club Hall. We can admit that within the framework of Halloween 2018, we implemented two large requests from players, submarines and fire Finally, the long-awaited club hall. You still owe players something. Local weather. Can we start waiting for it already? You can wait, but you can even try it out during the public test, and you can see for yourself how the visuals have changed. In the case that we receive positive feedback from the public test, we'll add this feature to the production server. The Royal Navy event continues. To obtain the new British containers, you need to complete the new directives. That's where you'll find the elements of a new collection dedicated to the Royal Navy destroyers. Our historians and artists are going to tell you how they created it. The collection has four sub-collections. Let's speak about each of them, starting with emblems. By all means, we have four subdivisions here. The first subdivision, emblems, is quite conventional because Her Majesty's naval services, unlike their Atlantic partners, never involved cartoon artists in drawing emblems. That's why we have here classic marine emblems of the British Navy, created in accordance with the rules of European heraldry. Here we have, respectively, emblems of destroyers. The second division is artillery. Here, we set the boundaries for the start and end of the period. We started with a 127 mm system that was common for British Navy destroyers at the start of World War II, and we ended with a 113 mm multi-purpose twin mount, a post-war model, that had taken into account all of the experience of the British Navy during World War II. You can find such guns on post-war Daring-class destroyers. We have them in the game, by the way. The third sub-collection is dedicated to the events where destroyers could make use of all of these features. The third division of ours includes photos dedicated to the start of World War II, when destroyers were playing a key part in the war, or at least a very significant one.
Well, okay, let's now finally turn to the part I've been waiting for, the fourth sub-collection, because we've never done anything like it. Well, where possible, each time we're trying to design something new. Here we have the fourth division, dedicated to camouflages. The most complicated part wasn't just for us to select some camouflages, but for our magnificent artists to shape a planar camouflage in a way that relates to the overall ideology of the collection in which various items are presented. I hope we did it right. It was really complicated. Just try to imagine this. A ship 250 meters long, stripes, circles, and other elements drawn all over the ship. And the entire ensemble has its own color scheme. You need to show all of these in a single element with a size of 160 by 160 pixels. The result should look realistic and historically accurate. And it shouldn't break historical context. We invented a kind of showpiece, a fragment of armored hull with a previously painted drawing, a small diagram and a ship's name. We tried to make it 3D to the maximum. This gigantic and massive stand. We measured its armor relative to the hull in millimeters. All those rivets, thickness of the plate, it's as if you really possess a gigantic piece of hull. One more feature to discuss. How do we make historical photos? Do we start a time machine? Drive into the past holding a camera and make the photos? Most of the work lies with our historians. The work of adjusting the time machine. Yes, they upgrade this machine. They create inspiring descriptions for artists and a plot. Artists need inspiration. Like the beginning of a novel. Yes, it's a true combat story with a mysterious atmosphere and everything they want to communicate. Historians include it all in the description. These are recreations of combat fragments that nobody ever saw, but we are showing them to our players. That's all for today. Our episode has come to an end. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We don't bid farewell and are waiting to meet you in the game.